What is up, comic fans? Welcome to the channel. I'm Mark, and today we're about to take a look at my top 10 picks for this coming week's new comic book day, and it's a fantastic week, and this is a wide variety of books. I'm really looking forward to it. Let's get into it. <music> shout out to the homies over at big time collectibles be able to check out their website follow them on social media check out the gold membership box that they just started there might be a few spots left and if you need anything cleaner press it my friend justin over on instagram he can take care of you let him know you found him via the channel and a huge shout out to where i'll be picking up all these books on this list abx comics and games right here in good old augusta georgia so let's get into it this is a fantastic week feels like it's actually a wide variety of books for once for me it's not leaning too heavy one way or the other these are going to be in no particular order by the way but let's go ahead and pop it off with wolverine issue number 36 now this does have a fall of x banner i don't know if it'll have anything to do with going on with the events happening in x-men there's so much going on with x-men right now but most importantly for me it's weapons of vengeance issue number three this is a crossover story featuring ghost rider and wolverine where they're getting back together to dive into a mystery that has haunted them for decades now so it's got a little bit of a throwback feel to it and the brand new stuff benjamin percy's writing it who's heading the ghost rider title and it's kind of like a like the layover event we just wrapped up something big in the ghost rider title and then it went straight into this event so the first two parts are really fun they're really cool it doesn't seem like it's too overblown or anything it's just like a fan service story but uh i'm all in on ghost rider like the ghost rider stuff right now has just been fantastic and also for Marvel, what's been fantastic is Philip Kennedy Johnson's Incredible Hulk kicking off with the Age of Monsters story arc. Issue number three is going to be diving into that cultish looking small town demonic possession that he found himself in the middle of with that hitchhiker that uh, is tagged along. So we're going to be seeing what exactly is in that town taking over these people and watching Hulk take on a monster that could quite possibly be as big of the mines that are underneath this town. So a uh, big, big Big excited for what's happening with the Incredible Hulk. It's such a breath of fresh air since that monstrous Donny Cage run. This is going to be a good one. Next up, coming from DC Comics, we have the Black Label imprint. This is the finale to the Riddler Year One. This was the prequel story to the Riddler story arc from the Batman, Matt Reeves, Battinson film. Paul Dano, the actor who plays the Riddler, actually wrote this story. And it's just been a descent into madness in the best way imaginable. Some of these get a little bit hard to read because they are so crazy trying to get into the mind of Edward Nashton. And he does such a good job of portraying it that it's actually really twisted. And you seem, see yourself getting frustrated with the character of Edward. And in this book, it's supposed to kind of culminate in the big event that kicked off the movie. So it's supposed to be booking right into the film. So I'm excited to see how they uh, cap it all off. Next up, speaking of finishing things off, we have Night Terror's Night In. This is the one-shot finale to the two-month-long event that was surprisingly really, really good. I had to eat crow on this one. I wasn't excited. I was kind of trash-talking the idea of them interrupting my Dawn of DC, kicking off for an event that should have been saved till Halloween, but this actually was phenomenal. I'm excited to see what Dead Man does with the realization of what happened that created the character in Sotme and how they're going to deal with all the nightmares from the Nightmare Realm brought to reality is what's going to happen with the Nightmare Stone. There's a lot of questions that are going to be answered. And then they're supposed to be building out a new character. I think it's called like uh, Dr. It's not the rhymes of Dr. Fate. Holy crap. Dr. Hate. Dr. Hate is supposed to be getting brought in and introduced in this. But if you'll remember, there was a big tease with Dr. Hate, with what was going on in the DC, uh, Dawn of DC Primer. We saw that Amanda Waller sent her team to Lazarus Island where the events of Lazarus Planet kicked off in the pages of Robin and World's Finest and all that. And she sent her team there to get a shard of what was left at the Helm of Fate. And uh, with that shard, Dr. Hate was born. So we're supposed to be seeing the follow-up to that in this book. So if you're looking forward to what's going to happen with that and in the coming months with the big Amanda Waller stuff that they've been building to, you might want to check this one out as well. And speaking of events ending, we had another one beginning inside of the pages of the Batman comics. We have the Gotham War featuring Batman and Catwoman. Chip Zdarsky's writing this. I, I don't know if I really care. I'm going to be reading it. I do pick up just the main Batman title in Detective Comics. I don't pick up Catwoman. Don't really care. And uh, Batman's coming back from his multiversal adventure that he just was on in Chip Zdarsky's run right before Night Terrors. 
He's licking his wounds and he's realizing Gotham's safer than it has been for a while, all because of none other than Selena Kyle Catwoman. I'm guessing he's not going to agree with her motives and the two are going to have some issues and the Bat family is going to split sides. I do know that Jason Todd is supposed to be siding with Catwoman in this whole thing. So you get to watch the Bat family fight with each other. Yay. Next up, big smile on my face for Action Comics Presents Doomsday Special. This oversized beauty is uh, bringing back the big man, the one powerful enough to drop the Man of Steel himself, Doomsday. He's been dead, but he reigns in hell, being the peak of physical strength, of evolution, of all these things. He is in hell, and he is sitting on a throne. And it's up to Martian Manhunter and Kara, a.k.a. Supergirl, to go down there, die if possible, just to stop him from coming up. What this is going to be doing is kind of building up those events that we're seeing happening in action comics, leading to a big Superman crossover event like we're getting with Batman currently. And in the annual, we saw them introduce the Brainiac is in the wings, and he had a couple of Doomsday Hounds, which are, uh, they had a name for him or something. I wrote it down. Let me see. Doom Hounds, which are supposed to be exploring more in this as well. It's featuring a Bloodwing backup story. So I think this is going to be a blast. That Bjorn's Baron's cover is wicked awesome. They're doing big things with Superman these days, and uh, they're just making them bigger. Coming in at number seven on my list, we have the finale to Danny Ketch's Ghost Rider miniseries. It's four issues, in and out. This is one of the retro titles Marvel's been putting out, which have been a blast. We're just dealing with Danny and Johnny Blaze tag teaming to go fight Scarecrow and somebody else. Uh, just a, like the regular old, uh, what do you call them? The regular old rogues of Danny Ketch, like the brokers in there and this like moving all these pieces and just amping up all these villains and stuff. And we don't really see to what end the villains are trying to do other than just stop Ghost Rider. Just kind of straightforward story. But it's been a blast. Next up is just a cover by coming in at number eight, Spider-Man India. I don't know what, I think it's issue three. And this is a variant cover by none other than John Jang. This will be on the direct market shelves. So be sure to check him out. I'm sure this variant will go fast. I'm not sure what's going on with the story. And I'm not going to be picking up issues after this. This is purely a cover by, but had to make the list. And speaking of anniversaries, we have the 30th anniversary of none other than the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Hot on the heels of the uh, Dark Spectre showing up. We have the Darkest Hour event kicking off last week. It was a phenomenal read. That event has been being built up for years. Like this has just been a blast. So in this oversized issue, we have a bunch of writers and artists coming in bringing Five, I believe, stories to the table, two of which are actually retro stories that they put into the book. So I'm all in for this. There's even a variant cover that has like the actual photo cover of the original crew from the Saturday morning show. Uh, these do have a $9.99 price tag due to their size. So I might have to just bite the bullet and stick with the A cover on this one. And for number 10, I have another cover buy for the final one. And we're going back to the Doomsday special with this beautiful Puppeteer Lee variant. That's just absolutely wicked so be on the lookout there's so many more good books dropping this week and so many more amazing covers out there and that makes 10 but you know what did not come out last week and i'm going to continue to put it on the list as i said i would exo man of war unconquered number four becky clune and liam sharp this is over a month now that this book has been pushed back i'm going to keep putting it on the list and keep reminding people that this fantastic book is out there somewhere at least the first three issues and that's going to wrap up for this list be sure to leave me a comment down below let me know what's on your list what you're looking forward to were any of these on your radar i'd love to know all that hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit that join button become a channel member today and until next time as always i'm mark but we are legion